Hello! In this video, we are going to talk about the rules for truth functional logic. Now, these rules that we're going to go over are ones that we're going to be using when establishing proofs. Okay, so let's start with the first rule, which is the reiteration rule. The reiteration rule says that given a statement P is true, we can conclude that P is true. Right? So really, all we're saying here is that if we already know that a statement is true, we're allowed to say it's true again. And that's the idea. Okay. The next two rules we're going to talk about are rules involving conjunctions. That is, when we have two statements that are both true. We have conjunction introduction and conjunction elimination. For conjunction introduction, the way it works is, if we're given a statement P is true, and we're also given a statement Q is true, we can conclude that P and Q is true. Right, so as you can see, we've introduced the conjunction. And it doesn't matter the order in which you've been given P and Q, right? Whether I was given P first and then Q second, or I was given Q first, then P second, doesn't matter. I just have to look for whether or not we're given both P and Q in order to conclude this. Okay, so next we have conjunction elimination. The way conjunction elimination works is if we're given that P and Q is true, we can conclude that P is true. And similarly, given that P and Q is true, we can also conclude that Q is true. Right? That's the idea, right? We're eliminating the conjunction, right? Goes away. So now that we've talked about conjunctions, now we're going to talk about rules for disjunctions. So we have disjunction introduction and disjunction elimination. The way disjunction introduction works is, if we're given a statement P is true, we can conclude that P or Q is true. And similarly, if we're given that Q is true, we can conclude that P or Q is true. All right, so that's disjunction introduction. But now let's talk about disjunction elimination which is a little different from the ones we've talked about so far. The way disjunction elimination works is we start out by being given P or Q. And the idea is to conclude another statement R. And we are allowed to conclude R if the following two situations are satisfied. The first is, if we assume P, we can deduce R. And similarly, if we assume Q, we can also deduce R. Now, what do we mean by deduce? Well, when we say deduce, we mean a sequence of conclusions that we can make, right? So, say we assume P, we can conclude something then we conclude something else, then we can conclude something else. It's a sequence of conclusions until we figure out that R happens to be true. So the idea here is that we know either P or Q is true. Well, if we can conclude that R is true in the case where P is true and in the case where Q is true, then R must be true whether or not we have P true or Q true. And so that's the idea of disjunction elimination. Okay, so now that we've talked about the rules for conjunctions and disjunctions, now we're going to talk about the rules for conditionals. That is, P implies Q, right? Stuff like that. Okay, so we have conditional introduction and conditional elimination. 
starting with conditional introduction. The way this works is, we can conclude that P implies Q. If, assuming P, we can deduce Q. And this makes sense, because what does this mean? It means that if P is true, then Q is true. So, assuming P, if we can come up with a sequence of conclusions to reach that Q is also true, then if P is true, then Q is true. Right? Now, assuming P doesn't tell us that P is true, but it tells us if P happens to be true, then it'll happen to be the case that Q is also true. That's the reason why this works. Right, so now let's go to conditional elimination. The way conditional elimination works is if we're given P implies Q and we're given P, then we can conclude Q. And that makes sense because P implies Q means if P is true, then we can conclude that Q is true. Well, we know that P is true, so we can conclude that Q is true. Right, so that's the idea. This rule has another name, actually, and it's referred to as modus ponens. Why am I saying this? I don't know. It just happens to be a name that shows up, right? That was good. Okay, so those are the rules for conditionals. Now, let's talk about the rules for biconditionals. So for biconditional introduction, the way this works is we can conclude P if and only if Q if the following two situations are satisfied. The first being Assuming P, we can deduce Q. And second, if assuming Q, we can deduce P. Right, so a biconditional works in a really similar way to a conditional. The difference is, is for conditionals, all this says is if P is true, then Q is true. But what this is saying is, if P is true, then Q is true. And if Q is true, then P is true. Right, so it works both ways. And that's the idea. So yeah, that's biconditional introduction. Now let's talk about biconditional elimination. So the way biconditional elimination works is, if we're given P if and only if Q, and we're given P, then we can conclude Q. Right, so this is exactly the same thing as modus ponens. But because it's a biconditional, it works both ways. So in addition, if we're given P if and only if Q, and we're given Q, then we can conclude P. Right, so that's pretty much the idea of conditionals and biconditionals. So we have four more rules to go over. And these four rules all relate to a logical connective we have not yet talked about. So at this point, we have talked about the AND connective, the OR connective, the conditional, and the biconditional. There's another connective that we have not yet talked about, and that is negation, right? P versus not P. How do we establish rules for negations? Well, we want it to be the case that either P or not P is true, right? One of those is true every single time, no matter what statement P is. The other thing we want to be true is that we can't have both P and not P true at the same time, right? We want to guarantee that those two things happen. And so we do so by introducing a concept called contradiction. And so here's how it goes. If we can deduce P and not P, then we can conclude a contradiction. 
And the symbol we'll use for a contradiction looks like this, right? This symbol really just means any statement and its negation, right? So that's the idea. But this doesn't tell us anything useful about contradiction. Well, our next two rules tell us what we can do with a contradiction. The first one being negation introduction. The way that this works is we can conclude not P if, assuming P, we can deduce a contradiction. Right? Because if we're assuming P is true and we happen to obtain, say, R and not R is true, well, the idea is for us to believe that R and not R is absurd. So our assumption that P is true must have been wrong. So therefore we must conclude not P is true because we also are inspired by the fact that either P or not P is true. Right, so that's the idea of this rule. But now the next rule is really similar to this. It turns out we're just gonna swap these two around. The rule is called indirect proof, right? We can conclude P is true if, assuming not P, we can deduce a contradiction. Right. And again, this makes sense because if assuming not P allows us to deduce a statement Q and not Q, then our assumption that not P is true must have been wrong because we clearly don't believe that Q and not Q can be true at the same time. So we can't have not P be true. So since we believe either P or not P is true, it makes sense to therefore conclude P must be true, right? And so that's the inspiration of this rule, really similar to this one. Now there's one more rule we're gonna talk about. And this one's the weirdest one in my opinion. It's called the explosion rule. The way the explosion rule works is if a contradiction is true, then any statement is true. So really, given a contradiction, we can conclude any statement is true. I try to avoid it whenever I'm writing any proof because it's just sort of weird because a contradiction is never true, right? But the way you can think about it is, well, for example, if I upload this video and I don't upload this video, then I'm gonna eat this marker. Now you might be thinking like, wait a minute, well, why would I eat this marker? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. You can conclude that any absurd statement is true if a contradiction is true. And so, yeah, these are the rules for truth functional logic. The whole purpose of why I'm writing all this is because we're going to use it when writing proofs. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.